All right, this is Alex coming at you with another random and interesting episode. In this one, we're going to be finishing up the stuff that I've wanted to go through on the moment generating function. And so just to recap, what we've done is we've proven this lemma right here and this lemma right here, the Markov inequality. And we're going to use these two now to prove that if condition one, which is this thing down here, okay? So you've got a random variable. And if condition one is fulfilled, it means well, there's two equivalent formulations for condition one, which one is that there exists a positive and negative point on the real line for which the moment generating functions are finite. And the other one is that there exists a closed interval like this, or rather that there exists a T zero greater than zero such that the moment generating function is finite on minus T zero, T zero closed. So let's, let's go on and formulate uh, the theorem, the main theorem of this little mini series, which is going to be statement four, I presume. Statement four. Statement four. So what I'm going to do here is, so let x again from omega into r be a random variable. And let condition one. Oh, yeah, I, I was going to use the Roman numeral always. Be satisfied. Oh, no, it's formulated as an equivalence, okay? So let's just do like this random variable. So this is a random variable. Then X satisfies, this is going to be A. Condition one is equivalent to their, the existence of a C and a B, both greater than zero, such that, such that for all A from R plus, we have the trails of the random variable are exponentially bounded. Now, the statement is important because it tells you something about the random variable. So that's why it's kind of the pinnacle of this mini series, because it tells you that if you have, if condition one is, well, amongst other things, if condition one is fulfilled, so one variant of condition one that there exists a uh, T zero greater than zero, such that the moment generating function, uh, let me do it like this. The moment generating function of X is finite on minus T zero, T zero. Then you've got this statement right here. The probability of being way off track decays exponentially. In other words, is very small. So this this tells you something. So we're gonna we're gonna try to prove this statement in detail. Not skip any. Just be really diligent here because that's what I like to do. So we're going to start off with a implies b. So what we're going to assume that so. In other words, condition, condition Roman numeral one is by definition, the existence of a T zero greater than zero, such that 
m x is finite on minus t0, t0, okay? So now we're gonna use that. We're gonna treat each of the trails separately. So first of all, we're gonna take the expression for p x. So take a, first, first of all, first things first, we're gonna take a, a from r plus, okay? Then we're gonna take p x, we're going we're gonna to want to look at this because this is what we want. This is the upper trail, okay? And we're going to basically using the properties for all t from r minus 0, you get the following, okay? This is just performing an equivalent operation going from here, just multiplying it by t, a non-zero t, and then exponentiating. There's nothing too special about this. But still, the omegas that have, that fulfill this guy will fulfill this guy, and vice versa. But now we can use Markov, because note that this guy is always positive, so we can use Markov to give us E, ETX, divided by ETA, because ETA is only a number after all. And this, of course, is the moment generating function of X at point T, E minus TA. Now, all we have to do is use our assumption and then put t equals t0, m, x, t, 0. Because we've, remember, we've done this for all t from r minus 0. So we can put in t0, e minus t, 0, a. And this, <laughs> so if we set our b to t0 and our c to m, x, t0, which we know, the assumption is finite, we have our statement. Now, treating the other direction, or the other trail, we, we will adapt a similar strategy. So again, we take an A from R. Okay, I'm gonna do this like other trail, other trail down here. We take this guy. Again, we can perform equivalent oh, yeah, sorry, this needs to flip. And then of course, if we again, here T can be R minus zero. We flip this guy, E minus TX, TA. And again, Markov, M, will give us M. Well, this time it'll be a little bit different, MX minus T, E minus TA. So again, we can set B to T0, and then C will be set to, well, of course, yeah, I just wanted to finish this. Oh yeah, Markov is an inequality. So of course it's an upper estimate here. And this guy then T equals T zero will give us MX minus T zero, E minus T zero A. And then of course we'll set MX T zero, we'll finish setting these. And we've got the statement now that was relatively straightforward. The other direction is going to be, oh yeah, I just want to, just, just for ultimate clarity, PX, um, X, this is what we wanted to prove, okay, for all A from R. This, of course, is the union X, 
of these two sets, okay? And it's easy to see that this union right here is disjoint. So we can use um, the finite additivity property of a probability measure to get to here. And once we're here, we have our estimates and our estimates tell us that plus T0 MX minus T0 in brackets, E minus T0A. So as stand corrected, we, we don't do it here. We don't do it here, but we instead go all the all the way and get to this this guy right here and then we set then we set um the c which is multiplicator in front to mx t0 plus mx minus t0 and then b of course again is t0 and then we have in fact indeed proven the exponential decay of each of the trails combined instead of uh, the, the top and bottom trail separately, which is what I was kind of attempting to do over here. So not that we need to do this as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on here. And we're going to try to prove the opposite implication. So let's now say that we've got B. And we'd like to infer A. So assuming that B is true, we have the exponential decay of this guy. Well, let me write it here. P, X, A is small equal C. So there, in other words, there exists a C, B greater than zero, such that for all A from from R plus, we get this down here, E minus B A, okay? It's easy to see that we get this type of thing. This is just from the sub added. Yeah, yeah, this is just a sub, the property of Mm. Now I'm going to write it down like this for now. Just x is smaller than minus a. This is easy to see, of course, because the measure prop um, a, b, when they're both measurable, then p. A, of course, P, B. Okay, when both of those are measurable, both of those sets A, B. Yeah, so we've got this, and now we'd like to just use this. We're gonna utilize, wait, we're gonna have to do a little bit here, a little bit of extra here to get what we want, I think. You'll see in a moment why I'm doing this. So I'm going to transform I'm doing this, the motivation, motivation is, well, I'll just write it down. Like I wanna evaluate, I wanna see if this quantity right here, ETX is finite. And I'm going to use this little reformulation, um, ETX, Y, Y, DY. I'm going to use this reformulation right here. It goes like this, right? So I'm going to use this little reformulation here. So I actually need this. I would like this. But my exponential decay law 
has only got an x there. And we would like to estimate this from above. So what? So that's important to understand, the motivation. So I, I've got this, okay? I've got this guy, and I've got this guy estimated from above by some exponential, you know, by an exponential decay. And, but here, what I would need is this guy, need. So I just devise a transformation. And then I will work through the details that I need to deal with. So transform, we're gonna do that down here. And I'm gonna delete this arrow, it's kind of annoying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that A, remember that this A is from R plus, one over T, the logarithm of alpha, where alpha needs to now be from one to plus infinity, and T needs to be from R plus for this to work. Okay, this is important because otherwise, if we allow alpha to be from zero to one included, then this expression on the right hand side is gonna give, it's not gonna be bijection, okay? Simply put, then this one over T alpha, this goes from one plus infinity into R plus, and it's, a, it's actually a diffeomorphism, okay? So it's, it's it's basically a one-to-one -one correspondence that is smooth on top of that, which is a very nice transformation law. But what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna use this and check this out. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna first apply it to our relationship, okay? So we know that this relationship holds for all guys from R plus, but now we're just gonna put in one over T ln, the natural logarithm of alpha, where alpha is from this range, which makes one over T ln alpha from the range for which this exponential law is gonna, gonna work. Except up here, we get, what do we get? B divided by T and then ln alpha. Immediately we see that alpha, the E, to the L and alpha can be rewritten as this guy right here. And furthermore, we can multiply, because T is not zero, so we can multiply by T, and then we can exponentiate and get E T X greater than L N, uh, sorry, the L N goes away, okay? So that's this guy right here. Now I'm gonna show you how to, yeah. So we have a technical difficulty here. So let's just let's just try to start the computation. So we'd we'd like to we'd like to say we'd like to find the t. So what we need to do is find t n. Uh, sorry. T n negative and t p positive such that the moment generating function is at these points, okay? To satisfy condition one. So we're gonna m x t, we're gonna write down the moment generating function right over here. What is the moment generating function? It's just e t x, like that. What is this? We're gonna use our formula. Uh, our formula says probability e t x greater than y, greater or equal y, dy. That's our formula. That's our little helper here. And what we're going to do next, uh, what we're going to do next is, okay, we have a little bit of a problem because what is our problem? Our relationship that we've proven here is valid only for alphas, okay? Only for alphas from one to plus infinity. But we can remedy this relatively easily because 
if you look at this, if you, if you consider splitting it like this, okay, plus one to plus infinity, P E T X Y D Y. You can see that this guy, this whole integral right here can never be greater than one because you're integrating over over zero one so the mass of the interval is one and this guy down here this guy down here can is it's a probability so it's from zero one so if you estimate this guy with a one you will get the following that this whole thing is one plus the integral from one to infinity of p e t x greater or equal y dy. But now y obtains the values for which this estimate, let's call this estimate one, for this estimate to work, okay? So what we're going to do is basically we're going to say, okay, well, this is, we'll use the estimate. Sorry, there's not, there isn't a zero here. We're going to use this estimate right here, and we know that it's C, Y, now, Y instead of alpha, DY. Ha-ha. So now we get to C, and now notice we've proven all of this for T, that is from R plus. Okay, so we have the ability to set our T now with C and B positive. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this guy out of here and plies. We're going to set T. We're going to set it smart. B divided by 2. And look what it does if I set it to B divided by 2. This guy gets out plus infinity, and this y right here, uh, it gives a minus 2, right? dy. Isn't that fun? So now what you get is, well, we can just evaluate the integral now. 1 plus c, that is finite and positive. Um, and here, minus y minus first one plus infinity so you just use the fundamental theorem of integral calculus here and you get this right you put in a one you get the bottom bound gives a, gives you one the top bound gives you zero with a minus so you get one plus c but this is finite so this all means that this all means that uh, m x at b divided by two is finite. So we'll set b divided by two will be our t positive, and then we can go ahead and you can verify this. Now I'm going to just uh, the the other. You know, you can find out that m x minus b2, which is your t negative, is finite. And I'm thinking if you require any additional tricks for this. Yeah, I don't think so. So in the same kind of fashion, you can do this. The only thing that you need to do, I believe, is use... I'm going to just do the one thing that you need to do differently in order to prove this one. And that's you need to go up here and look at this up here, right here. So we used... Uh, why is this? Well, oh, yeah. Up here, okay? We used this one. You just need to, need to use the bottom one with the same substitution. So... I'm going to just demonstrate real quick what that would look like. P. So we, we want to look at x smaller than minus a. And this trail 
also obeys exponential decay, BA. Now, you put in your A as 1 over T, L, and alpha. T and alpha are still from the same, the same um, sets, same intervals that I described before. And this guy, you just rewrite him as minus A. Like that, so that you can, and then if you put in your your substitution, you get e. This time with a minus t x alpha, and I'm just I'm just using this right here c alpha minus b t. Yeah, and then what happens is when you've got this guy right here, I need a little bit more space. I just don't want to start a new. I'm going to make a little bit a little bit of space here. I just don't want to mess around too much. And when you have this guy, you can just try to try to do mx minus t the same way. But what you will arrive at is this integral right here, P, just by the same approach that we've just done. This guy is going to be E minus TX greater or equal Y. Huh. But I already showed you down here how to deal with that guy. You see it? Down here I've already showed you showed you how to how to deal with him. So you can you can do this deal with this analogously. Analog. Yeah. All right. So that's it. That's how you prove that the trails um, that exponential decay of the trails is equivalent to the moment generating function being finite on some closed or open interval of zero containing zero or or um or two points one negative one positive which we've detailed in this this uh condition one in the previous lessons so Thanks for your attention. And next time, I don't actually know what I'm going to do. Next time, I'm thinking, I've been studying some statistical physics, but what I'm really, what I'm really loving right now is the characteristic function and its use in probability. So I think I'm going to move into that a little bit because the characteristic function is similar to the moment generating function, but it has a little bit more utility.